Welcome to our service today from the Ingleborough team of churches. Today is our lambing service where we give thanks for the lambing time which is ongoing. Uh, we pray for our farmers working very hard uh, in this very busy season of the year uh, and we look to reflect on and learn from the Good Shepherd. Jesus our Lord describes himself uh, in a parable about sheep and shepherd and how that relationship shows us about our relationship with him and the love of God that he brings to us. In a little while in our service we're going to see uh, how things are going at Broats Farm, one of our local farms, and we'll see how lambing time is getting on. Uh, some, uh, and we'll see some of the little lambs in action. We're going to begin the service with a prayer, uh, so let's turn to pray now. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, there's some great hymns centered around the theme of sheep and shepherds, such a rich theme in the Bible. And so we're going to sing our first hymn together now. So we've got some pet lambs, having a little drink there. This is 
just one of the gang of pet lambs in here, all waiting for their milk. Aren't we sweeties? There's a little squirty lamb. I'm going to fill that in a minute for the bigger guys. There's just a few little ones that need a bit of help. Mm, she'll be able to reach up at that, shouldn't she, really? But some get bullied out the way, don't they, by the big ones? There's some big ones in here. Yes, hello, you. Hello. Very hungry lamb, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got it all over your coat. Look. <laughs> I'll get you some in a minute, big ones, eh? Big We've got some hungry lamb lambs here. I think they, they've got mummies, but mummies haven't got quite enough milk, have they? Yeah, Which one? With the red spot? Yeah, this one, what you just yeah, this one's hungry as well. <laughs> Multitasking here, look, videoing and feeding. The Gospel reading today is from John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Let's now pray for all those who are hard at work in lambing time and also those who are involved in other areas of agriculture who provide us with what we need. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we pray for farms in the midst of lambing 
and ask that the little lambs and vulnerable sheep may be protected against predators. We pray for the growth of the grass in the emptied silage fields. We pray for the sales of sheep with lambs at foot. We pray for farms planting potatoes, maize, linseed, oilseed rape and vining peas and for the treatments that encourage growth and protect from pests. We pray for cattle turned out from winter housing. We thank you for the blossoming of the orchards and for the pollinators and we pray for the fruit that will grow. As we pray that new life will come and that it will be protected from harm, so we pray that Easter life will grow in us and be kept safe too. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, those images of little lambs being fed and cared for really are just lovely. Let's just admit it. Uh, it's wonderful to see and if you do get chance to either through local contacts of your own, uh, it can just be a great thing to do to go and help out with lambing time uh, uh, or even just visit a few uh, places and feed a pet lamb. Uh, it is just lovely and such a significant time for us in this area. Uh, so many farms rearing sheep uh, and so this is a very busy time 
uh, and so it is good to keep uh, their farmers and farming households and all connected with the work in our prayers. It's not an easy time. Um, it has its own energy and joy to it. I know uh, speaking with farmers, they uh, enjoy it and it, it is uh, such a busy and joyful time, but it is hard work. So do keep them in mind and keep them prayerful. Keep prayerful for them. But the, the image of sheep and shepherd is, as we know, and is as is celebrated in, in so much of the life of the church, it is a picture of the tender care that Jesus has for us as his people, that we're often called the flock. He watches over us as a shepherd looks after the sheep. And this parable, the story that we've heard today, is Jesus using that metaphor to teach something about uh, what that means for us as people. It's not always a straightforward image, a straightforward metaphor, but it is a beautiful and very touching one. But the thing about Jesus as the shepherd is this is not just gentle Jesus, meek and mild, you know, carrying a little lamb in his arms, uh, because even in the story, the parable that Jesus tells, there's some, there are elements within it which represent the troubles, the evils, the great challenges of this world. Life is not always straightforward. It's certainly not straightforward if you're involved in the work of lambing uh, and farming, of working the land. Uh, everyone knows it's not easy. And likewise with using that imagery of sheep and shepherd and what that shows about the world and about faith, it's not easy. Jesus talks about the thieves, the thieves and the robbers, and later in the chapter he'll talk about wolves as well. The thieves and the robbers who only come to steal, kill and destroy. Well, what does he mean? Well, Jesus, around this chapter, both before and after, Jesus has confrontations with the spiritual leadership of his day. Uh, he's essentially using this parable to speak against them, to show them the shortcomings of their leadership. Uh, in chapter 9, they had, uh, they had thrown out a man, the man who was healed, the man born blind. Jesus heals him, uh, but they shout at him let, and throw him out, uh, showing uh, their lack of compassion for him. And Jesus uses this parable to show that things don't always go so well. But unfortunately, this was not just something uh, confined to Jesus' day. This is something that continues. Uh, sometimes the stories of failed leadership can be uh, amusing once they're gone. At the time, they can be distressing, but uh, at other times, we can look back with a slight smile. And I have to say, I've mentioned this book before, The Field Guide to the English Clergy full of rogues, a real rogues gallery of vicars who didn't do it so well. And the last one in the book is one called uh, Edward Drax Free, who was, well, a drunkard, a gambler, womanizer, uh, and ran up through those things many debts uh, and used his living in the Church of England uh, as a way of gaining more money, essentially stripping the church of assets, he even sold the lead off the roof so that services could hardly be held in the church. Good heavens. Eventually, he barricaded himself inside his uh, vicarage because the bishop had sent some armed men uh, to confront him and drag him out, and they had to starve him out with a siege. I'm sure that was distressing at the time. We might look back with a smile now. Uh, this was some hundreds of years ago, I hasten to add. But mostly, the clergy do a good job. They are hard, we are hard-working people, for the most part. Not speaking for myself. So what does this mean? What's the relevance? If this does apply to leadership, how is there a contrast between the leadership of Jesus and some of the leadership that we see? Well, it, this contrast is real but it's not obvious in our day. Very few are rogues that we see today, rogues like this Reverend Dr. Edward Drax Free. 
So what does falsehood look like? Because that's what it is. That's at the root of what the thief and the robber is about. Uh, not leading the sheep to safe pasture, but leading them into error and falsehood. What does it look like? Well, look at the ministry of Jesus. The sheep don't have to work hard. He just cares for them. He is gracious and loving. But he carries them away from danger. It incorporates both. There is danger for the sheep, but there's also grace and love in Jesus Christ. And it's those two things that encapsulate it, centered on the grace of God. We don't have to try hard to be sheep. We simply are when we are in the hands of Jesus. And that's a choice we make by faith. So often I see an absence of the message of grace, either because there's a denial that there is a danger, because there's, yes, there's dangers in this world, there is a danger of eternal judgment in the world to come, and that's often denied. Or sometimes there's a denial of grace, saying that we have to be something, we have to uh, work hard to be a true Christian or whatever it is. Yes, it takes effort on our part, but it's not the ground, the basis of being part of the flock of God. That is only the grace and care of the shepherd. He is the one who brings us to the fold. And it's those two things that are so often denied. So then the question is, what does the grace of Jesus look like? Well, in some ways, we've got to hear the voice of the shepherd to know that the Bible is our guide to what the shepherd is like. And so that once we know what his love and care is like through reading the Bible, we're so much, it's so much easier to hear him speaking to us each and every day in our lives, through circumstances, in our hearts, but also through his word as well. We do need that. We need to hear the voice of the shepherd and what does that voice do for us? He leads us. He guides us. He reassures us. He speaks of his love. He comforts us. That is the voice of the shepherd. And he keeps us safe from danger. Yes, eternally safe, but also he'll carry us through this world. It won't always be easy here, but he will carry us. And what does he offer? As it said at the end of the passage, fullness of life. A share in the life of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are blessed with spiritual life in Jesus Christ that lasts now and forever. Let me just finish with this image of being led into safe pasture. Think about what that looks like for you. Many of us might feel that we're going through a time where we're, we don't feel we're in safe pasture. But we all need to know the reassuring love of Jesus Christ. We don't have to be big and strong. We don't have to be the ones who find the right path, who look after ourselves, uh, stand up for ourselves in the world. Because he will. We just need to ask. Ask Jesus to watch over us and keep us safe. And he will. This parable of sheep and shepherd being of the gateway to eternal life, if it shows us anything, it is a promise that Jesus looks after us. So let's ask him to do just that. And he'll fulfill it. Amen.
I'm going to start with a prayer from the Tear Fund Lent book, which I found really encouraging. If, like me, you sometimes feel that despite your best efforts, we still fall short of how we want to be. The worst thing that you have done cannot separate you from God's love. Those habits that you wish you didn't have cannot separate you from God's love. The fears and doubts that you keep only to yourself cannot separate you from God's love. Nothing in creation can do it. Space and time themselves cannot do it. Death cannot do it. God's love for you is invincible and it is woven into every cell in your body. Shame is a sham. It is not of God. God is love. Open yourself to this love. It is always open to you. Loving one, Thank you that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ. Help us to take hold of this reality in our hearts. Amen. So much in our world seems broken or stuck in a rut. But you are a great fixer, God. We pray for the war still waging in Ukraine and for all that affects. We pray too for a fair resolution to the many strikes happening in our country as people are struggling to maintain public services. As a nation, we look forward to the coronation of King Charles III. May it be a time of celebration. We ask that you would bless his reign and the life of our nation. And we pray for all members of the royal family as they prepare for this occasion with mixed emotions, remembering the loss of a mum, grandmother and great-grandmother, our late Queen Elizabeth. In our community, we pray for teachers and children returning to school after the Easter break. May they be refreshed for the final push towards the summer. And we think especially of those due to sit important exams and making choices for their future. As we close, let's take a moment to remember those we know in particular need at this time. Those who are sick, recently bereaved or otherwise troubled. We pray they may know your healing and comforting touch and that you will bring peace and light into their darkest of times. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for our lambing service today, coming to you from Ingleton here. Uh, this theme of uh, Christ as the shepherd of the sheep and we as his flock uh, can be so encouraging. And I hope that you are encouraged that uh, Christ cares for you as a shepherd tenderly lifts the lambs in their arms and watches over them. Uh, do keep in touch, keep an eye out for all sorts of uh, events coming up over the coming months and next week we'll be reflecting on the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III. So do watch out for all the events coming up. Check out our website to see what's happening in the communities in this area uh, and of course around the nation as well. Let me close this service with a final blessing. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>